I find it very interesting that they deliberately put the names above these four African Americans, Councilwoman Callaway, Councilwoman Jackie Poplar, Councilman Eric Mays, and Councilman Montez Davis. Their names was depicted over the head of their picture and also below their picture. And I question the purpose. I also think that when you look at the article that was just recently eloquently written about the three non-African American women in Grand Blanc that was elected to office, I question did Margie Raymer and Dominique do a background investigation or did they do a credit report? Since when the prerequisite to run for an elected office in the city of Flint in Genesee County is predicated around whether or not if you have good credit or whether or not if you was a felon. I take offense to that. And I take offense to that and I take it very personal. But I come tonight to say to, the, to uh, Juan Chance Davis, you hold your head up high. Because I don't know what I would have done if a man had raped my mother. I don't know if I would have took his life or I don't know if I would have turned to the prosecutor. I just don't know what I would have done. And I say to Councilwoman Galloway and Councilwoman Poplar, the mere fact that they depict you in the paper, grouped you right. with what they perceive to be felons, right. I've never known right. many people in this country who files bankruptcy. Oftentimes, it's not because you're irresponsible financially. It's because you have fallen into a situation beyond your own control and was in that situation what led you to have to file bankruptcy. But why was they writing an article that was totally irrelevant? Juanchez Davis served his time. Just like Donald Haley served his time. And yet they found him worthy to name the Genesee County Adult Probation Department after a felon. Every day, people who are convicted of crimes have to go through that probation department. If we can look up to the late Donald Haley as a hero and worthy to have a building, the probation building named after him, I can certainly look up to you, Wontez Davis. And Eric, you know how I feel about you, but right is right. I look up to you because you are an example as African-American men that our young men have hope. Just look at you. And no one can stop what God has called. No one can stop that. And those who are of a Christian mind, those who proclaim to be believers, those who claim to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, that everyone should be in an outrage over that article. That leads me to this point, Council President. I do believe that because the Flint Journal has received the tax abatement, we need to do two things. One, I believe that the editors, along with Marjorie Raymer and Dominique, their resignation should be called. Secondly, I believe that we need to see if there's a legal means by which we can rescind the, um, the, the, the tax abatement that was given to the Flint Journal. It is time that the Flint Journal make its mind on whether it wants to be a partner or whether it wants to continue to be an enemy and stirring up racial divide in this city. I think time is out for that. Enough is enough. Then I want to say I hope that all nine of you who have been elected today, I hope that you serve the people. And over in the book of Chronicles, it talks about this. It says, when you speak, speak of grace. Always. And let, you, let it be seasoned with salt. That you might know what you ought to say to every man. In other words, how do you respond? It is time out for politics. It's time out for these backdoor deals. And I am calling, and I don't care how they feel about it, the NAACP. Instead of saying and they have conversations with the Flint Journal, it needs to be made public. Our concerned pastors need to take a stand on this issue. All of our community leaders need to take a stand on this issue. And you, the nine city elected city council people, need to take a stand on this issue. It is time that we tell the Flint Journal that we're tired of them creating the news. They're supposed to be writing the news. The last thing I want to say before I take my seat. I am asking that every African American and every saved individual stop subscribing to the Flint Journal. Time is up for that. And then I think that Margie Raymer, along with Dominique, 
and the flip of the general's editors ought to stand before this city council and extend an apology to the African Americans that you, you deliberately demoralized. And it's a shame that, we, that the Flint Journal write a story different on one convicted felon than they do another. And the only difference between the late Donald Haney, Wontez Davis, and Eric Mays is that Eric Mays and Wontez Davis is black. It is black. If we're going to be a council, and I thank God for what I see today, this is a council that's diversified. This is a community that's diversified. And the Flint Journal needs to understand that. And so, Councilman President, I do ask that a letter be sent to the Flint Journal about the frustration of this body about that article in the Flint Journal. I want to say thank you. I pray that you guys do what God called you to do. And Juan Chez and Eric Mays, Callaway and Poplar, your validation don't come from the Flint Journal. Say that. It comes from God. And the people spoke on November the 5th, and that's why you sit in your seat today. And I pray that you humble yourself and don't get in a rat race and acknowledge God in all things, and he's going to direct your path. I say thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Mr. President. Mr. President, I'll talk about this a little more and I'll continue to public to speak, but I want to say this. When I read the article, Donna, and I know we've had differences, but that should stop. Differences should stop right now. You've said a lot today and I'm gonna support what you said and I'll finish up on it later because this will be a long journey. We'll see what people do. Your recommendations are fine. But I'll say this. When I seen Monica Galloway, Councilwoman Galloway and Councilwoman Poplar in the same article with Davis and I, I was appalled. See, I knew that I had a felony and everybody should have knew it's been reported in the journal. You just push a button, it popped back up. I got two of them, and we can talk about it in detail. And I'll explain that, but the point I'm making is, when it comes to them African-American women, or women in general, they can say what they want to about me. In my order of business, when I seen the two African-American women in there with me and Davis, I was appalled. It wasn't even the same category. They could have wrote about us and then wrote about them later. But then you're right. When I looked at Sunday's paper, journalistically the most read, those women who were not African-American were looking good, talking about history was made. I said, well, we made history too because we had three women and two of them was black and one was Hispanic. Same story. So it's a problem now with how we're being portrayed. And people think I'm gonna mess up Flint's image. Watch this. If I'm right and God got his hand in it, by the time I get through, we gonna be moving. Res despite what other people do. God bless your comments. And I was gonna make sure you had enough time to say them. Thank you, Eric. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Chris Zawala. Chris Zawala. Hello, council people. Congratulations on the newly elected, and congratulations on my council person, Jazz Freeman, for being elected. Even though I did a write-in for your dad, but <laughs> I guess it don't matter. My name is Chris Zawala, and I'm president of the Potter Longway Neighborhood Association. When I took this association about two years ago, I told the group my two top priorities were going to be crime and blight. That was two years ago, like I said, and it's still important on that list. There have been a lot of times when either crime or blight could not be handled because of manpower and money. I personally tried to compensate for both with my time and my money. I have mowed over 65 yards and fields that have empty houses on them or didn't have any houses on them. In the spring, when the contract was taking so long to finalize its mowing contract, mowing the city parks, 
My neighbor and I mowed along Williams Street about 40 feet deep in off the curb to prevent the place from looking like a jungle. I tried hard to keep off-road vehicles off the park because they make a mess and they cause blight by tearing up the field and create noise. And because they make a mess and cause blight, wait, I just repeated myself. And they cause blight by creating noise pollution. Now here's my complaint. There's a rugby field in the park east and south of Potter School. These players have access to a nice parking lot right off Whittier Street that the players can use along with the spectators. Whenever they have a game or practice, they do not have they do not feel they have to use this parking lot that has been kept clean for them. They pull up on the grass off Whittier in front of houses and park along the rugby field, leaving trail marks as they go. They've been asked numerous times not to do this by me and others. And they say, well, well, Mr. Molina says he'll fix it and he'll tell people not to park in the field. The next week they get argumentative and started dropping names like Pat Jerese and Josh Freeman. When I started to call Mr. Freeman, they up and changed their tune and said they would stop the practice of parking on the field. Next week comes, and they say they have to park there because they have equipment to haul to the field. My dad pitched fast pitch softball for over 20 years and never had to park on the diamond or haul their stuff to haul their stuff out like bats, balls, bases, scoreboards for state kids, and etc. We never had to do that. I went to Ball games, a friend, watch a friend of mine's kid out in Davison and up to Clio. We walked half a mile to the ball field. I've never seen cars parked along the field. That's just outrageous. This happens whenever, this happens whenever they hold practices. I would like city council to look for the contract that these guys say they have with Mr. Jerese and void it for lack of compliance. The lack of compliance would be the decades long law that says and used to be posted, no motorized vehicles allowed in city parks. The next item I have to talk about is the replacement of a sidewalk on Churchill between Curry and Branch. This is the fastest job I have ever seen done in my life by the city of Flint. They tore it up on Friday, 11-8, and they poured it, and it was all done by the day. The sidewalk was bad, but so are a lot of the other sidewalks, which I'm sure that a lot of people in this city know about their sidewalks in their areas, too. There are a lot more needed replacement, and they're more used by residents, including children and folks walking their dogs and going to McDonald's. I think it's great that some work is being done, but why not ask the people who use these sidewalks which ones should be replaced? If there's no money for this kind of work, where did this money come from, and who gave the work order? There's got to be accountability here. I can name out. Uh, I just did an audit, Potter School, that the Blake. Uh, the Crim Foundation's put is uh, giving money to have sidewalks and infrastructure repairs done along Potter School. We spent an hour outside there evaluating sidewalks. Now, if I got to evaluate a sidewalk to get a grant to have our sidewalks done, who authorized this a little bit? And then they didn't finish the whole thing. I mean, the next step over is like a drop like that from the sidewalk down to the next piece of sidewalk on Churchill. There's another one on. Uh, Dexter, where they went around the they went around the tree, and it's like this. Now there's a path around the sidewalk. I mean, who's judging these sidewalks and determining which sidewalks get fixed? I've got a real good idea about where this came from about this sidewalk, and it might have something to do with the fire department. Someone involved in the fire department. I just got a real bad problem that if I'm out there working. Humping my butt off, doing things by the book, doing.